Hello everybody, here René from Spain with a new video and in this video I want to show you uh, guys uh, some stuff that I've been listening to in the last two or three weeks you know, of course I listen to more stuff than this, in this talk but, uh, but most of it I put it all together here because I thought it would be interesting to show you all this stuff that's right, that's what I'm going to show you very soon but first I want to show you some stuff that uh, that I got, but I didn't uh, show you yet. You know, I forgot to show you this in the in other videos before this one. So I want to show you quickly some some stuff that I got uh, recently, and I forgot to show. Uh, Flotsam and Jetsam with the Cold from 2011. It's a very good album. This I already played it uh, once, and I really really enjoyed this. This had very good reviews uh, back in 2011 in the magazine Artschok. You know, it was I think the the record of the year, the album of the year, 2011. And I didn't bold it then. I don't know why. Of course, it's not possible to buy everything. You know, sometimes you have to wait, and maybe the prices goes down a little bit. And that's what I did with this release, and I I I, I bought I paid a good price for this. Okay, the next one will be uh, Visha Rumors, uh, Razorback Killers. 2011, same year as the Flotsam and Jetsam uh, release. I still have to open it, it's still closed, still sealed. Then we have Avenged Sevenfold, a maxi single, just with two songs Hell to the King and Nightmare Life. It's from 2013 on Warner Bros. Records. And then a record that I already put back here once, but I forgot to really show it well, it's the Kiss Alive, the Millennium concert. I mean, this was released um, first in a box set with the Alive uh, 1 and Alive 2 and Alive 3, and then this one came in that same box too, but now finally in 2014 it was re-released on vinyl for the first time, on double vinyl, and this is was, was recorded in... Um, in December the 31st, 1999. And I really love it. I mean, this is the original lineup of Ace Friendly, Peter Chris, and Jane Simmons and Paul Stanley, of course. And I really, really think the songs are great because they play the songs very heavy. For example, Psycho Circus, that's where the song they start this album with, the live album with, they play it in a different way as the studio version. It's really kick ass, you know, it's amazing. And also we have Into the Void on here, also from the Psycho Circus album. Uh, and that of course that's that's uh, Ace Friendly sings on that song. Also 2000 Men is on here with Ace Friendly singing. Uh, we have Black Diamond with Peter Chris singing. We have Beth with Peter Chris singing. And just just very nice. Also some uh, 80s songs from uh, Kiss on it when they had no makeup on. Like, like Heavens on Fire and Lick It Up. And uh, it's really cool. And the end, of course, with Rock and Roll All Night. This is a must-have for any uh, KISS fan. Sounds very, very good. This was going to be a live 4 originally, but finally they released uh, the Symphonic album. You know, and then this was like bands. You know, a live 4 is the Symphonic album and not this one. And this is now known as La a live the Millennium Concert. And the last one of the things I forgot to show is this album by Slayer you see it's a good album of course I, I mean uh, yes this is better than, than Diabolus in Musica that I also bought on vinyl that I already showed you the other day and this is Christ Illusion I never bought this on CD when it came out I don't know why it's from 2007 and now finally it's re-released on vinyl I think for the first time good quickly I'm gonna show you some stuff that I've been listening to. Nacht Mistium, Rhein of the Militias. I listened to a lot to the new album by them, but I also start playing this tape in the last two weeks. And it's, uh, it's of course, it's, it's more raw black metal, raw, you know, more uh, obscure sounding black metal and less melodic than the, the last album by, by Nacht Mistium. You know, also the guy still had corpse paint on, you know, back in uh, 2001, Blake, uh, nowadays of course he's without the makeup on, 
good. Also, it has some. Uh, this is studio album, but also have some live recordings on here. Then we have White Snake live in '84, live in Japan, the Super Rock Festival in Japan '84. Great, great, great uh, DVD, and also it has a CD with some uh, bootleg stuff. You know, quite, quite nice. This is must have for for any White Snake fans. Grave Digger, Escalibur, great record from 1999. I mean, I love the trilogy, the Tombs of War, a Night of the Cross, and Escalibur trilogy. I mean, those three albums are amazing. You know, they were released in the late 90s, and and they were they were they were important back then, because you know, heavy metal traditional heavy metal was not so big as maybe nowadays again. They are it's quite big nowadays again. But uh, it was really nice that those albums came out because it, they kept uh, the flame of, of real heavy metal alive for anybody that like me that were into heavy metal back then. And uh, I was really happy with uh, Tunes of War especially because it was like an amazing record. I mean, um, of course, the, uh, the Grave Digger came back with The Ripper in, 90, in 1993. But uh, when Tunes of War came out, I think it was 96. I mean, I was blown away. And then Night of the Cross and then Escalibur. And I also saw them live a couple of times during uh, the, the, those three albums. You know, and I've, I even got into the, sh into the tour bus. I think it was in 98, 97, 98. I, got, I, I could go into the tour bus. And uh, they were very friendly guys. Okay, UFO with Obsession. Great album. I listened to this three or four times in the last two weeks. I mean, a lot of good songs on here. This is just a must-have, of course. It was a re-release from 1999 on the Rock series. See? Then we have here Storm Warrior at Foreign Shores. This album, uh, Grino showed this album on vinyl. And after that, I picked it out of my collection and I put it in the car a couple of times. Nice live album. I also saw this guy's live maybe six or seven years ago. A very cool band from Germany. Uh, Rock or Bust, of course, the new ACDC. This is still on my uh, playlist all the time on, on Sony Music. I got you already know this album. Nugent. The other day, uh, Scott Walters was showing this record, and I think he said that this was his favorite album by him. I, I'm not sure about that. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said so, Scott. That's why I thought I'm going to get it out of my collection and give it a spin. A good heavy rock album. Uh, Udo, again I listened to this album. Nice, nice, nice live album. Loads of Udo songs. I mean, that's the cool thing about this live album. It's a double CD and a DVD. Very cool. I mean, this is a must-have for any Udo or Accept fans too, eh? Only there's only one Accept song, Metal Heart, on it, but the rest are all Udo. Gothic Knights, great, great album, debut album by this band, and this came out on this on the label Sentinel Steel, that was quite active at the late 90s, from the mid 90s till I think the late 90s. They also released the fencing. I still own that fencing. And they release stuff like uh, Gothic Knights, uh, and uh, they also release uh, X Hammer. You know the uh, an album that never came out in the 80s, but uh, for the first time it came out in the in the 90s. Uh, Legend Maker. They released an album by Legend Maker. I think they were from Brazil. That band. They released some uh, Burning Star records. You know they re-released the Burning Star record with some bonus tracks. I think the album name was No Turning Back. Great album by um, by Burning Star, and this album too, Gothic Knights, and some other stuff they uh, they released. And this is a U.S. metal, you know, the way uh, U.S. metal was sounding in the in the eighties. I really like this album, you know. It sounds uh, it has a little bit of the Warlord, you know, Warlord sound to it. It's a really cool album. And after this one, they released I think two more. But this is my favorite uh, Gothic Knights album. Okay, uh, now some more black metal, black death metal. Belphegor with Black Magic Necromance. I have to go a little faster, if not, this video is going to be too long, I think, because I have a lot to show. See? This is a nice, with a slip case around it. It's, uh, of course, I'm a big Belphegor fan. Finn Lizzy. The other day it was, I think, the 30th anniversary that, that uh, Phil died. I mean, the singer of uh, Philip uh, Linot died. 
And uh, I, I thought I'm gonna play this, you know, to think about him a little bit. Great album with Gary Moore, very good. More UFO. I played this when I was making crepes, you know, like pancakes. I was making that in the kitchen and I, and I got my uh, little CD player and I played this live album. Great album, of course. Molly Crew, Dr. Feelgood. You know, it's always a fun album to play. Raven, One for All. I mean, uh, this is from 1999. Uh, and I like this album so much. You know, it was produced uh, by Michael Wagner, you know, the guy that worked already with Raven back in the day on, on the All for One album. I think he's on there too. And this is the One for All album. And this, all the songs are great. I mean, uh, some are better than others, but it's a nice, nice album. This is one of my favorite Raven albums, and it's from 1999. Like, well, check this out on Massacre Records. I, mean, I bought this when it came out. Very cool release. Another album I always liked very much is this one, Endangered by Pink Room 69. A nice hard rock band. And uh, melodic hard rock, you know, but with some balls. You know, it's not, it's not, it's more hard rock with balls. Quite heavy, you know. Uh, with Dennis Ward, that's now uh, in Unisonic, I think he's also in Unisonic. And of course this is the band that Andy Dearest came from. Of course later he went into Halloween, he formed Halloween. And this has, of course got a different singer. And I saw these guys live uh, during this album, no, not the one before, in Barcelona. When they were opening for Bruce Dickinson. And later we went to uh, the Rock, uh, rock Hard, no Rock Hard, no. Uh, Hard Rock Cafe in Barcelona, in the Plaza Catalunya, and then we uh, we spent time with the Pink Room 69 guys. And I'm not going to tell you what happened later at the Ramblas, at the clubs, etc. But that's a different story. But very, very fun guys to be with. Pink Room 69. Accept, Blind Race, I play this one again too. Finally, I listened to Steel Prophet again, after many years without listening to the, to them. I, I own nearly everything they released or everything, not not the latest album because I think they are back now again, and this one is from 1999, a great progressive heavy metal record, you know if I mean it's really cool. I mean this album is really good. If you like Mystic Force for example or or Fate Warning, I think you will also like Steel Prophet. You know and this album is uh, is very good and I really like it, and it has a very good cover song on it too, Ride the Sky by Halloween, an old Halloween song. Very good, and they play it very heavy and very cool. Gas King, this is uh, two CDs, uh, two albums on one CD. The End of the World and No Way Out. I mean, uh, one came out in 1981 and the other in 1982. Gas King, underrated new wave of British heavy metal. Slush, new album. I think he showed this album on CD. This is my wife's. She bought this on CD. I, I have it on vinyl. You could see it on my top 20 uh, from 2014 uh, video. Slipcase, quite nice one. And this is of course an album that you all should own. If you are into hard rock, buy this record. Please do it. It's very good. How to England by Manowar. One of my favorite Manowar records. Another Schloss album I've been playing quite often lately. With a lot of nice uh, different singers, like uh, Lemmy Kilmister, uh, Kilmister, of course, from uh, Motorhead, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Mel's Kennedy also has uh, two songs on here, actually. And all the rest only have one song. But of course, he later beca beca become the, became the, um, the main singer of Slash. And on this album, he only sing sings him. Okay. Killer Dwarfs. I know this band, uh, Lee liked this band very much from, uh, from uh, Canada, Canadian band, and this was their comeback live album, it also came out on DVD, that I also own, very good live album, Winnie Vincent Invasion, All System Go, go a little faster now because it's not impossible, Guns N' Roses, Chinese Democracy, I mean, I didn't really like this album when it came out, but now I've been playing this quite often lately, and I think it's a good album. You know, okay, yeah, it's some, sometimes you can hear uh, like a slush type of solo, but this album, of course, uh, doesn't really sound like the old Guns N' Roses. You know, it doesn't have the dirt, the aggressivity, you know, the, the violence, you know, in a, in a way that um, 
that the, the, the first albums had, you know, especially Appetite for Destruction, you know, the, the decadence, you know, the, the drugs, the alcohol, you know, that's what's missing on these records. It's everything is very clean and, and happy and, and great, you know, and that's not uh, really what Guns N' Roses were about before. And, but I still like this album, really. You really have to check this album out. It's from 2008, and this should have sold better than it did, in my opinion. Van Halen 2. Oh, something fell on the floor. Anyway, Van Halen 2. I love Van Halen 1 a lot more than this one. I think this is was a letdown after Van Halen 1. In my opinion, eh? But this was also on the Scott Walters' uh, best from 1979 uh, records. You know, he said that this was one of his favorite albums from 1979. And I checked it, and to be honest, no, I don't really like this album. I, I mean, I quite like it. I mean, the songs there are nice. But Van Halen 1 was a lot better, in my opinion. Okay, quickly some vinyls. Shire, Hard Rock, from 1989. Not a killer record, to be honest. I even forgot I had it in the collection. But I was looking on... At the S on the vinyls, and I completely forgot about this record. And normally I don't forget the records that I own. You know, I don't forget it. But I forgot about this this cover. You know, and I listened to it, and it's not so good to be honest. This was a lot better. Also melodic hard rock shout, but this sounds a lot better. Melodic hard rock, you know, from uh, this Christian hard rock band shout with Ken Templin on it. Very very good. This is a good album, especially the B-side. I really like the B-side very much. You know. Megadeth, Killing is my business and business is good. Again, I played it. I mean, I bought this in the early 90s. I played it a lot of times, but it's still, to me, this is not a killer record. I mean, uh, T-Cells Who's Buying, that came after this one, is a lot better in my opinion. The B-side has some good songs, but, uh, for example, The Mechanic... I mean, uh, this is for the Four Horsemen, of course, Metallica did that song too. But Mechanic on this album doesn't really sound good, in my opinion. It sounds very fast, but it does, it's just very amateuristic. I mean, I didn't, don't really like this album very much, you know. No, no. I have to, I have to be honest there. You know, I, I love Megadeth, but this album is not, not one of my favorites. Then I played Manila Road. Quite, quite a lot, this album, because uh, Aaron, the metal theologist, made a video... And he showed uh, this album, and I thought I'm going to pick it out. This is the Black Dragon edition, not the older edition, that has a, had a different production and one extra song, you know, the Roadster Records um, edition. But also, it's on here, it's not listed on here, but it's also on here. But anyway, uh, you know, I didn't know that information. That's why you learn always, and the Aaron video made me, made me uh, know about this, you know, about this. That the mix are different be between this edition and the Roadstar uh, edition. Okay, Tyson Duck. I mean, this is a must-have of a record. I mean, this album is great. I really, really love this Duck. Uh, Beware of the Duck album. I really, really like it. It's it's pure heavy metal, the way uh, heavy metal should sound like. You know, 1984. This is a must-have for every anybody that's into heavy metal. Buzzards, this is a band from Fran from Belgium with a record Gambler. I already showed this recently, but it, I just played it a couple of times this week. Another killer record with a lot of Iron Maiden uh, riffs, you know, like it's really, really good album. Is Blizzard of Wizards by the band Blizzard from Japan. A great, great record. You know, I don't know how I can recommend this enough because this is just a nice great album to me their best album and they have like four or five vinyls and this one to me is the best album it's in japanese edition on atlantic records but they never made it uh, made it big you know they were on a big label but they never made it you know of course loudness or anthem or earth earth shaker were bigger okay bulldozer i also listen to this one quite often and this is Neuro Deleri, a great record. This came out on Warlord Records. This was a re-release on Picture Disc. I think it came out in 99 or 2000, 2002, around that time it came out. 
This is another picture disc that came out by Bulldozer in those times. Different records. Uh, also, Necrodet released this picture disc. And this, uh, this was on a different record label, on Scarlet Records. Matter of All Evil. And this album came out, uh, you know, on, on CD. And then also it came out on picture disc around the same time. Also Italian bands like Bulldozer. Then I listened to this album, Survivors by Samson. Because this was also on, on, uh, on Scott's 1979 favorite album list. And he showed this record. And it's a really good album. I really like this album. And this also came out later years later in 83. It was re-released again. With a different cover. And here we, you know, it's, it's just different. You see, with the, with the same set list. Okay. I listened to Pat Travers. Making Magic. I mean, look at the guy's shirt he has on. You know, it's like total female, eh? You can say. <laughs> but uh, those times maybe it was normal in 1977. But this is something my, my wife would put on, you see. Maybe not so low down, of course, like here, but maybe a little higher up, or with something underneath, of course. But in those times, it was normal, I think, to wear to uh, have things on like this. It's okay, it's an okay record, but I'm not a big fan of Pat Travers. I only own this one, and I think one more, but nothing more. A band I'm a fan of is the band from Switzerland, and the name of the band is China. I mean, China released some cool stuff in the late 80s and early 90s. And this one is from 1991. It's a very good uh, melodic hard rock record. Very good, very good one. I really love this one. See, it also oh, comes also with an order sheet. See. And I listen to Street Angel. This is an Aora record. It's not uh, Aora uh, poppy hard hard rock. I don't really like this album. So if anybody uh, likes this record, I mean, wanna trade it i mean uh, i'm welcome for uh, uh, welcome for a trade okay this is everything i want to show there's one more thing i want to show you one more thing i hope so i can find it here with all this mess oh yeah here this album kiss alive i mean this is of course a re-release i bought this in the early 90s i think maybe 91 or 92 um, you know i really bought this then and and this had some uh, kind of a protection here here like kind of a, pa uh, a paper but like a material type of paper but after the years that paper i just found it out now because i listened to it i want to i wanted to listen to it and this little paper that was here and there went into the cd look i hope so you can see it you see it went into the cd and damaged the cd but not only this side with this side i mean i don't really care about so much it also went through you see? And now I cannot play this anymore. And the reason I'm showing this is because I remember in the 19, early 90s, they always said, I mean, forget about the vinyls, CDs are, are forever. And I'm so glad I never got rid of my vinyls. Because the vinyl that I own by this same records is from 1974. You know, and I can still play it anytime I want to. And this that was released, I think, maybe in 1990 or 1991. I cannot listen to it anymore. That's why. What's better? CDs or vinyl? You know, of course, of course vinyls can get damaged too, of course. But they, they told us, they told us that CDs, you can throw them on the floor, do whatever you want with them, you know, throw things on it, they never get damaged. I mean, look at this fucking piece of shit, you know. I don't, I don't talk like this, but this is rubbish. Anyway. Stay happy everybody and stay happy because metal is forever!